Pear Davis and I am back with Mental Health Chats and our topic for this month is emotional fitness and I am really excited to have Robin Weeks with us here today. Hi Robin, how are you? Hi Claire, I'm doing great today, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us Robin and um, the reason, there's a big reason why I've got Robin joining us and that is because whether or not we're managers in our lives, in the workplace, Whatever we're doing, we really need to bring emotional fitness into our life. And Robin's going to give us some really big insights of the people that she helps who especially need to look after their emotional fitness. So let's find out a little bit more about you, Robin. Who is Robin Weeks? Oh, well, Claire, I have a leadership training and coaching company um, here in the United States in the state of Virginia. And I have been in that field for about 20 years now. And I started in two years ago, another line of services because I kept running into so many people in my leadership training classes who were starting to care for their aging parents. Yeah. Um, as a former caregiver to my mother, as she aged, I was profoundly impacted by that experience. And as I was meeting these managers in my training classes with no place to turn and nowhere to go, and I was witnessing the amount of stress they were under, yeah. I felt I needed to do something to find ways to support them while they're juggling a second job while working. Wow. That is, that is so insightful because so often um, when I'm working with leaders and managers in the workplace, um, We've just got this tunnel vision that everything's about the workplace and we don't know about their personal lives. So that's obviously, um, you know, close to your heart. And I think it's really, really um, eye opening for me because we do need to take into an account, especially for emotional fitness with our leaders and our managers, um, what might be going on in their personal lives. So, Robin, do you want to tell us why you're so passionate about helping leaders and managers in this area? Certainly, Claire. As I said, I'm a former caregiver to my mother. I cared for her for almost seven years and she died at the age of 94. And it was a profoundly impacting experience on me as a human being and a person. I made many sacrifices to my work and my personal life and my health during those six plus years. And uh, at one point hit the burnout wall as many caregivers do. Caregivers today in our workplace are juggling not only their jobs, but they're juggling their families often. They're in what we call that sandwich generation of having children and aging parents that they're trying to care for and a career. And so frequently many of these caregivers in the workplace don't come forward. The benefits are zero to limited for them in the workplace. And they don't know where to turn. And as I felt for many years before I hit the burnout wall and turned things around for myself, that they don't know where to go for answers. They feel alone and isolated and their mental health is at stake. And there is vast amounts of research out there showing that the levels of stress for those in the workplace caring for an individual, a family individual, is, is beyond what is normal for most of us. And so I started this line of services, caring for caregivers so that I could help them find answers. I could help them make better decisions. I could help them manage their emotional well-being, mm. both in the workplace and out of the workplace by using strategies and tools and techniques that I developed through my own experience and training as a certified caregiver consultant. And to help them find ways to avoid the, the health downsides to caregiver stress. You talk about emotional fitness, and uh, I frequently refer to it as emotional well-being. In my plan, I have a plan on how to create a well-being plan if you're a family caregiver in the workplace. And, and that has to do with several areas. It has to do with financial. It has to do with your home environment. It has to do with your social life. It has to do with your spiritual beliefs or your spiritual well-being. Um, and it has to do with your social connections as well. Frequently, as caregivers, we give up a lot of those things because we're so dedicated to those for whom we care. And that's when our mental health comes into play and starts to fall apart for us. 
So I've got two big questions I want to ask you, and I'm actually going to hone in on the negatives, first of all. So where do you see emotional fitness really going wrong for caregivers who are also working really long and hard hours as well? Caregivers working, working caregivers, uh, and what I mean by working caregivers is those that have a job, a full-time job, and are caring for a family individual, are, are, are basically doing a second job. Statistics show on the average, they spend between 20 and 30 hours a week in caregiving duties and responsibilities and tasks. That is unpaid work. That's a second part-time job. So they're already working 40, 50 hours a week, and then they're going home and having all these other responsibilities. However, the, the, the mental uh, issues come into play because they're having to spend so much time during the work days taking care of caregiving tasks, making doctor's appointments, dealing with a crisis that comes up where they have to leave work suddenly or come into work late the next day. And all of these things start to accumulate upon a caregiver and build up the stress in their bodies, which you and I both know has to do with increased levels of cortisol in your system, which, you know, short term, that's great. That's our fight or flight response. But long term, that's very unhealthy for our bodies. And I have seen caregivers in my leadership training classes who have come into my classes just tears streaming down their faces because they're so stressed out and they're not sleeping. Some of the really detrimental effects to their emotional fitness are, are lack of sleep. 76% of caregivers report poor sleep, um, obesity, um, imbibing too much in alcohol. I mean, we all like a glass, not all of us, not many of us like a glass of wine from time to time. But when we're stressed, we tend to overdo that. Um, we don't eat well because we get home and we're tired and we're caring for someone. So we may not be eating a very well-balanced meal. And so that, of course, contributes to more stress. And we eat fast foods or we drink too many sodas. Or, or, and then the the other part is what I call the hypervigilance. Caregivers are often, as a lack of sleep, is they're sleeping with one eye open, waiting for the phone to ring. Mm -hmm. Or waiting to hear their parent get up because they're worried they might fall if they're living at home with them. Uh, the other hypervigilance is you've got your phone with you and you're on call basically 24-7. Yeah. That level of hypervigilance is emotionally draining, fatiguing, and detrimental to your physical health as well as your mental health. You lose lack of focus in the workplace. You lose some productivity because you've always got this thing in the back of your head going on. So it's very, very stressful in both mental and physical uh, well-being for caregivers in the workplace. Thank you, Robin. They're, they're very, very um, insightful tips there because we do need to look out for caregivers in the workplace and find out if they're on our teams or if they're, you know, we're working close with them on a project, um, et cetera. So let's flip that round. And can you tell everybody, um, as a caregiver who's working 50, 60 hours a week, you said, then has his second job, which is 20 to 30 hours a week, what can caregivers do for their emotional fitness? Great question. I have a plan in my emotional fitness well-being uh, webinar that I do. And there are, as I said, there are seven areas. Um, one of the first things that I recommend to caregivers when I'm consulting with them is to look at how many different teams you can create as a caregiver. Caregivers, and this was me as well, we tend to think we're the only one that can do this job. I've got to do my work job. I've got to focus on work. I've got to focus on caregiving. I've got to focus on my family. I'm going to give up my social life and my hobbies. And I'm probably going to give up my exercise too. All bad choices. <laughs> so one of the first things I recommend to my caregiving uh, clients is that let's look at who all the people are in your circle. Who's in your immediate circle, family, neighbors, relatives, close friends. Let's look at who's in the circle outside of that and then the circle outside of that. Then what we do is we identify what each person in those circles has as a strength. Are they good at organizing? Are they good at uh, following through with things? Are they good at doing research for you? 
What are their strengths? And then we look at what sort of task they may be able to help you with or pick up for you. For example, we often overlook some people in our lives that can help us do a lot of things. So for example, if you have uh, a paper boy who brings the paper to your door, which that doesn't happen very much anymore because we're on the internet, but some places it still does. Or let's say you have a lawn boy, you have a neighborhood kid who mows your lawn. That's someone who could help you. They could walk your dog for you if you needed that done. Yeah. They could water your flowers for you while they're mowing the lawn so that you would you can check that off your list done. So we would tend to overlook a lot of people in our lives that can be help help helpers to us and be on our various teams. And then what we do is we put those teams into categories. Who's my team in case there's an emergency and I have to be in the hospital with my my loved one? Who's my team at work if I have to leave work for a day or, or an afternoon? Who in my who on my team can pick up the slack for me or is willing to do that or is cross trained to do that? So we look at all the various ways you can create these various teams. Who's on my transportation team? Let's say I, I can't pick up my dad who's in adult daycare today. Can someone else do that for me? Who is that individual that I could rely upon to pick my dad up? So we look at all the types of teams you can perform. So that's one tool I have. Another tool I have is having a family conversation. Mm -hmm. When we become caregivers, we're often thrust into this. And my whole approach to this is to be proactive, start early planning and, and preparing for what's going to come. And part of that is having a family care, uh, family caregiving conversation. Yeah. And I say extend that into the workplace. Don't be afraid to come to, to your supervisor and say, I'm going to be caring for my father. He's moving into my house with us because he's aging and now alone. And don't be afraid to bring these topics up because, as you said, we often don't know what's going on with someone at work. Yeah, They come to work and they look stressed or they look upset or they've got tears coming down their face. And we say, what's wrong? And they say nothing and we walk away. Mm. We need to have the conversation in the workplace. We really need to open this conversation. And I coach my caregivers to please talk with their supervisors and their peers and colleagues and mm -hmm. share what's going on. They don't have to get into intimate details, but to share this experience that they're starting to have in their lives because it's very impactful. Oh, so Robert. Those are tools. <laughs> Yeah, very, very insightful. And I think they're two extremely powerful tools because something that you said at the beginning of um, our conversation was the fact that it's very lonely. It can be a very lonely place as a caregiver. So if we get our our tribe around us to help us, um, our people around us, it's going to be so enlightening. And I love the fact that you also said that you coach your clients to have a conversation and coach your clients to think of these people. Because so often I know myself, if I'm overwhelmed and have too much going on, I can't often see the wood from the trees. So you are sort of giving them, helping them with this clarity that there is a light and they can help themselves. So Robin, what you're doing is absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for your tips your advice your help and i'm sure there are some people out there who are thinking i need to get in touch with robin so where is the best place for people to actually approach you well they can reach me at my email all the time it's r-o-b-i-n robin at my pivotal point and that's m-y-p-i-v-o-t-a-l-p-o-i-n-t Dot com. And my website is mypivotalpoint.com. I'm on Facebook as well. I have a Facebook group. I, it's a private group, so you can ask to join. It's uh, My Pivotal Point Caring for Caregivers. And you can find me on LinkedIn, Robin Weeks. Wow, that's absolutely brilliant. And I'm sure you put a lot of advice on Facebook and LinkedIn <laughs> to help people as well. So thank you so much for your wise words and for anybody out there who would like to contact Robin um, for future help, I'm sure she's there to help. And do take care and good luck. Thank you, Claire.